Good morning. It is the 1st of October, 2024. And I found this amazing article and I did share it, but I wanted to just um, kind of go over some really cool things here. And, and first of all, I want to start with the fact that everything has fallen into place in such a supernatural way for, for this year, for this um, Yom Teruah Feast of Trumpets for my family. Um, my, mainly my daughter and I and my husband, he joins us too. Um, but we, we've always, every year, we just, you know, we haven't, we don't do a big thing. We just literally, we go through, it's the Feast of Trumpets, and we go through and blow our shofars. I wanted to say, if you don't have a shofar, there are plenty of cool shofar uh, plays on YouTube, which I'll share, um, which you can just put on in your home the whole day. It's the day of blowing of trumpets, so you could literally keep it on, which I plan on also doing. But I wanted to share this really cool a little testimony of um, this Yom Tru, this Feast of Trumpets. I have just felt him calling my heart to this day. And I I really didn't understand it. And I was like, Lord, I really don't know what to do. I mean, I, I know what we've done on in the past, but I don't know what to do. So my daughter, one of her projects for um, history, we do a Christian homeschool program. Actually, it's War, Warrior Notes Homeschool program. They go, they have a curriculum up to fourth grade at this point, but it's Kevin Zadai. And, um, it's an awesome curriculum if you homeschool. And I love it because it, the Holy Spirit is just all in it. Okay. So this project that we have been working on is the Feast of the Lord. Um, because in history, it actually goes back to the Feast of, uh, to the history of Israel and how they became a nation and, um, who Israel is and all of that. It's really cool. But this one project, she had to pick a feast day and look into it and study it and do like a poster on it. The project is on the Feast of Trumpets only because she wanted to do Shavuot. She was really excited about Shavuot, but it had already passed and um, I thought, you know what, I'm going to just do a poster for each feast day and then she can learn it and we can have fun doing it. So that's what we're doing right now. This particular project we are doing Yom Teruah. So we started actually in Leviticus 23, you know, and, and read there, but it, we were led to Exodus 19 because that is when, you know, God came into covenant with Israel on the mountain and all this stuff. So we were literally, and, and the trumpet sounded long in Exodus 19. The long trumpet blast is actually the, the last trumpet on the Feast of Trumpets. It's pretty cool. So I wanted to go over a couple things in this article. This is the coolest article. And the reason that I was led to this, we weren't even going to do his birthday, but Dylan, my daughter, she was sitting there writing in Leviticus 23. She was writing that verse out for her poster. And she says, Mommy, I think we should celebrate Jesus' birthday on the Feast of Trumpets. And I said, oh, yeah, like what, what makes you um, want to do that? She goes, I don't know. I just thought about it. It just came to me. I just was thinking that would be fun to make him a cake and celebrate his birthday. She said, why does everybody make such a big deal about all these other holidays? You know, Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, all of those things. And they don't celebrate these days. I don't understand. And I was like, that's a great point. Now, we, um, we have altered the other holidays in our home. And I'm not sure if we're going to do away with them altogether. Um, and just replace it with what it really is. Christmas has been a very hard one, being that I have a child and I came out of the world um, in 2016-ish when she was young. I had done Christmas up until then, and then we kind of it kind of dwindled, and we just didn't make a big deal about it, and we really focused on the birth of Jesus. But this particular time, it's really coming alive for us. And I b believe the Lord is, is leading us to that time to really set it apart. 
this Feast of Trumpets. So she says this about his birthday. And I said, you know, that's really interesting that she said that. I said, Dylan, did you, did you know that that could be a day that Jesus was born? And she says, no. I said, well, I think it is. I said, you know, and I hadn't looked it up. I had not studied into Feast and Trumpets for a couple of years. I really just, I went into a deep study a few years back, but maybe in 2019-ish, 2020, I think we, we did a Feast of Trumpets gathering with people who just had no idea what we were doing, but we gathered them together. We blew the shofar. We read the scriptures, et cetera. But it really, um, I, and it wasn't as rich for me as I wanted it to be because there was so much more I knew. Well, anyway, back to her, her doing her poster. She's talking about how it's Jesus's birthday. And so I didn't realize that that was actually a thing. So I went to look it up. I found it and it is a thing. And so I found this article and I just thought it was really interesting. It talks, it's basically taking, taken from this book that was written entitled Mysteries of Jesus' Life Revealed about his birth, death, resurrection, and his ascensions. And so basically it's based on the way with the way technology can move with the calendars and go back to different moon cycles with the calendars it's just really cool how it places it with within even revelation chapter 12 which is amazing to me just that that whole breakdown of scripture i'd never been shown that before been shown a lot of other things about that scripture in revelation 12 but not this um Okay, it says, there's a great deal of significance associated with the fact that Jesus was born on Tishri 1, which in the Hebrew calendar, Tishri 1 is beginning at, I believe, sundown on Wednesday. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Let me look at the calendar real quick. Sundown on when, uh, Thursday. Actually, yeah. So sundown Wednesday, the 2nd going into Thursday. I believe that's it. I, I, yeah. Okay. So early Jewish Christians consider Jesus to be the Messiah. And because he was born on the Feast of Trumpets, they also considered him to be the king of the universe. The theological understanding of the Jews within their synagogue services for the Feast of Trumpets was that God rules over all and that he is the king of kings. According to Zacharias 14, 16, commonly quoted, was the king, Lord of hosts. And we know that Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is Yehovah Sevaioth, the Lord of hosts. Yahweh, the Lord of hosts. So here's some cool scriptures also you can add to, to read 47, 93 and 96 through 99, where it talks about where he reigns. So this is what I found was cool too, because I was always confused by the, the fact that in the scriptures, Passover time is the beginning of the year, right? So why is this tradition? Is this kind of like our Christmas for, for the Jews? Um, that where they, for what I mean by that is where they have created man-made traditions and created Rosh Hashanah as, you know, instead of Feast of Trumpets, like we do Santa instead of Jesus type thing, right? I, it just kind of my thoughts. I really didn't understand it, but this really helped me to understand that there there's a reason they call it the head of the year, Rosh Hashanah. So the Feast of Trumpets, or Rosh Hashanah, is the start of the Jewish civil year. Before God told Moses that the month of Exodus in Nisan was to become the start of the religious year, Tishri 1 was the start of all years, from creation to the Exodus from Egypt. So that's pretty cool. That literally, they're putting Feast of Trumpets on the start of creation. So that's one thing. So there's talks about Noah also. Um, you can read through this. So we're saying the birthday of the world, right? Feast of Trumpets is actually the birthday of the world, right? Then we go to Noah, the first day of the first month, and that's Tishri 1. That's when the water had dried up from the earth. So it's like a rebirth of the world. 
through Noah. Okay, and then we've got even the day many of the ancient kings and rulers of Judah regarded as their inauguration date with Solomon, uh, the prophet Jeremiah, and the I think Ezra was a priest. So one of the key themes of the Day of Trumpets is kingship. It was used in counting the years of a king's rule. It's linked to Joseph, who is a type of Christ. I mean, there are so many cool things in this article. Abraham and Jacob were born on Rosh Hashanah, or Feast of Trumpets. Okay, that's cool. Abraham was a type of new beginning for mankind after they failed to re realize the promise of Adam and Noah. Jacob was a new beginning for the Jewish people. Also, notably, Isaac, Joseph, and Samuel were also born on the Day of Trumpets. Jesus was prophesied to be king of the world, to lead all people into a time of freedom and peace. Though there could not have been a better day in the Jewish ecclesiastical calendar to introduce Messiah to the world. So, lastly, it should be noted that the, both the birth of Jesus, his first coming, and his second coming at the rapture, resurrection of the church, there will be, that will be on the Feast of Trumpets. Like two bookends, Alpha, Omega, beginning and end. Um, yeah, isn't that amazing? So, I just wanted to share some of the cool things that I found in this article. You can read through. Let's see. Since Mary was of the lineage of David and able to bear a rightful king of the Jews, she would have been required, along with Joseph, who was also of the line of David, to register and give an oath that she and her offspring would remain loyal to the existing government under Augustus. Finally, we know from Scripture, jo Joseph was a faithful Jewish man, true to Jewish law. It would, therefore, have been highly unlikely that he would travel from Nazareth to Bethlehem during the Feast of Tabernacles when Jewish men were required by law to be at the temple. So, it's just another puzzle piece as to why he was born on trumpets, not on Tabernacles, Passover, or unleavened bread. So... Yeah, it's just a really cool article that I wanted to share with you. Just some good perspective. And I just think it's cool to have a, a separate day that we celebrate the birth of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach. Because Christmas w is never really focused on him. And if you do Christmas or if you don't do Christmas, we all know it's pagan origin. We've all been shown that. Well, mo most people have. And all I can say is that the Lord has been gracious to me over the years for Christmases. There have been times where supernaturally he's provided funds for me as a single mom back in that time when I was going through really hard times to even get a Christmas tree and to uh, get presents you know, for my children when I was a single mom suffering. There's so much religious spirit. There's so, it's rampant. And we have to be very careful because we have to remember he is the king of the universe and he works through all things. But what the enemy meant for harm, God can still use for good and he can speak through all things. Somebody came after me yesterday through about Samaritan's Purse and Franklin Graham. You know, the thing was, the post wasn't even about Samaritan's Purse or Franklin Graham. The post was about people suffering and people standing up in the gap to help those in need. Isn't that what Jesus said? Why do we need such religious uh, perspective? Why can't we just flow in the Spirit of God and just move forward and let Him speak to each of our hearts? Let's not listen to other people. Let's listen to what He says to each of our hearts. Anyway, there, that's my rant for the morning. I pray that you will, um, you know, try to do a little bit of Feast of Trumpets and, and, and Rosh Hashanah or Yom Teruah, however, you, whatever you want to call it with your family, even if it's just you and nobody else wants to join you. Jesus is there with you. You know, the Holy Spirit's there with you. You aren't alone. But anyway, Shana Tova. <laughs> yeah, happy soon to be Feast of Trumpets Day and happy birthday to our King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus our Messiah.